Well, our second speaker would be Ajay Wu Song. He is currently a PhD candidate in the Computer Science Department at the, at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. He will present their work titled Pocky NN, Integer-Only Training and Inference of Neural Networks via Direct Feedback Alignment and Pocky Activations in PLC++. Hi, good afternoon. Nice to meet you. And my name is Jay Wu, and I'm from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. I'm a part-time PhD candidate there. Um, I tried to put all the necessary information into the title, so I will read the title part by part. So the pocket NN is its name, and it's for integer-only training and inference of neural networks. I use it direct feedback alignment for training algorithm, and also pocket activations are the, the, the activation functions that I designed for this purpose. Finally, everything is written in pure C++. So this is my motivation. As a tiny ML developers and engineers, we all really interested in on-device training and inference because it can solve many important problems of online communication such as data privacy issues, higher electric power usage, longer time delay, and also higher device price. And for this purpose, integer arithmetic is really useful. Why? Because tiny ML devices are slow and they have tiny storage. And integer arithmetic can make DNA models faster and also make models smaller. First of all, speed. Many tiny ML devices do not have floating point units or FPUs. So I searched on the Arduino official website, and they emphasize that I read a big chunk of the quote. Floating point math is also so much slower than integer math in performing calculations, so should be avoided. What about storage? This is a really simple math. So if you use 8-bit integers, then you can save 75% of storage compared to 32-bit floating point numbers. So up to now, the most of the related works of integer-only DNNs were focusing on quantization. And here, I want to emphasize that pocket NN is different from quantization. Pocket NN solves problems of quantization by directly operating on integers without any quantizations. So um, there are, uh, in, a big, in a big sense, there are two different types of quantization. First is um, quantization for inference only. That's I, there, I wrote, uh, there I wrote as type one, like QAT quantization, OER training, and PTQ, post-training post quantization, both belong here. And they use floating point numbers for training. Compared with that, Pocket NN uses uh, integer-only calculations for both training and inference. What about type two? Type two quantizations are for training and inference, but they often they involve various uh, complex algorithms, and those complex algorithms like involving the stochastic roundings or deterministic roundings or shifting or scaling, and those operations can make calculations slower. Compared to that, um, Pocket NN can uses very simple calculation, which I will show you in the next slides and there's no explicit quantization at all. Also, some related, to, uh, the related works, some of them still use floating point numbers in some parts of their calculation, and also some of them use integers to implement floating point numbers. For example, if you have um, two different integers, then you can actually um, uh, implement floating point numbers using the IEEE 754, in this sense, you are using the integer variables, but actually, conceptually, you are still using floating points. Um, on the other hand, Pocket NN really just uses integer directly. And also, the previous works often suffer from overflow, and then the Pocket NN does not suffer from any overflow at all. Um, last but not least, um, most of the open source codes are written in Python. It's really good, it's really good for the research, but it's hard to directly apply them on the, the MCUs or tiny ML devices. Um, compared to that, I wrote everything in pure C++ without any using, without using any libraries to ensure the maximum compatibility. So let's see. Backpropagation causes integer overflow. 
that propagation is a de facto standard tra DNN training algorithm. And actually, it can easily suffer from into overflow if you use it for integer-only DNN training. Why is that? Uh, backpropagation updates the weight and also the bias vectors via so-called deltas, like this. So if you want to update the weight, then you um, multiply the deltas with the, the, active, the activation values. And for updating bias, you just directly using the deltas. So what's the deltas? So deltas of, are defined to be the partial derivative of loss in respect of the, the hidden layer. And if you see the, the formula, actually you can see that if you want to calculate delta of the kth layer, you need to multiply the delta of the k plus one layer to weight of the k plus one layer. So there is a kind of a recursive multiplication. So and for the for the, for the floating points, it cannot be a problem, but for integers, you end up in the overflow, like, because if, if you go from one layer to the other layer, then of, uh, it has to, the, the upper bound of the number has to go up. So for example, in this simple uh, floating, uh, the fully connected layer, the neural network, you can see that, oh, sorry. You can see that uh, the in hidden layer too, there can be overflow from there. So I wanted to um, solve that overflow problem, so I ended up with using the algorithm called Direct Feedback Alignment, or DFA. DFA is a new emerging biologically plausible DNA trading algorithm because um, backpropagation is kind of not bio biologically plausible. We cannot think about our brain cells are doing the matrix transpose, transpose and then there's always the feedback and the backward network. So DFA trains the hidden layers independently from each other layers by propagating a the error directly from the output via fixed random feedback matrix. So the, here the, funny, the interesting thing is random. So you don't need any kind of um, partial derivatives or any com uh, complex calculations, but you can use really just random matrices as long as you have the, the correct dimension. So appropriately sized random matrices are used to define deltas of DFA, like this. And you can see that it has, it's independent from other layers deltas. Here, RK is the only just a random matrix for kth layer. And then after, once you get the deltas of DFA, then you can update the weights and matrices in the same manner. So because the deltas of DFA are independent from deltas of other layers, then there is, there is, there is no integer overflow. So you can, in, in the figure, you can see the difference between backpropagation and also DFA. Because DFA, the output layer's error goes directly to each layer so that their, their upper bound does not change, does not grow. And so that DFA was for training, but even though you train without any integer overflow, still you need the, the proper activation functions. So I designed those um, the a family of uh, activation functions, and I named that, um, them as a pocket activations. And those are piecewise linear approximations of a popular uh, activation functions. Why I use linear approximations? First, linear appro approximation is, um, it ensures the faster calculation. And also like sigmoid or tangent hyperbolic, they use the, the, the Euler's constant E and also exponentiation, which is really hard to uh, implement in integer-only calculation. So you can see the exact formulas there, and also you can see the graph uh, that they kind of the, uh, the approximates quite well. So they ensures the inputs are 8-bit integer range. Also, output values are also in the 8-bit 8 8-bit integer range. So here's the result. So I used um, fully connected layers to test on the two popular data sets. First is MNIST and second is Fashion MNIST. 
for MNIST, I used only two hidden layers, so it's a kind of a very simple, fully connected network. For Fashion MNIST, it's a little bit more complicated data set, so I used the three hidden layers. And for, Poc for Pocket NN, the loss function is a sum of squared error because like categorical cross entropy, they use the logarithms. It's also hard to be implemented in integer only, so I used the sum of squared error. And I compared the accuracy result of, of pocket and then networks with floating point counterparts. And because we are using integers, 8-bit integers, compared to the 32-bit floating points, so we can expect the accuracy degradation. So our interest is that how small is the accuracy de uh, degradation? And you can see that the accuracy degradation was only about one or two percent points, and that is really similar to the previous uh, quantization research related works. So we achieved performance which is almost identical to related works, which is quantizations, with much, much simpler integer only algorithms without explicit quantizations at all. And we, this is uh, purely written in C. Uh, the reason was without any library, because it, it was for higher compatibility and portability. I also even use it, I, I, um, I even made it without C++ STL because Arduino does not support it. Um, related, uh, other codes written in Python are, if you want to test it, then you need to port it to C++. So this is a proof of concept code, and this is a part of my real code when I, what I used for my testing. And everything, the code is on the online repository and DFA and also back, a backpropagation is implemented, so if you, you can see all the code there. So in summary, Pocket NN is for integer only training and inference of neural networks and it directly operates on integers without quantization. DFA was used instead of BP to, for training in order to prevent uh, integer overflow and also making calculations simpler. We also made a family of new activation functions and they are named pocket activations. And everything was implemented in pure C++ without any dependencies. So I hope and I think it will be a useful tool for tiny researchers and developers working on integer-only DNNs. Thank you. Time for about three questions. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, I have a question. So I'm Sapnel from UCLA. So you, uh, so you, you are, you are proposing not to use backprop and use DFA. Right. Uh, so I mean, well-known problem with DFA is it does not scale for deep neural networks like ResNet and you know complicated tasks. So could you clarify like what kind of applications you are looking to use this, uh, you know, DFA method? So, so you mean that um, what if um, DFA does not scale well? Yeah, like if, the reason why people don't use DFA is you know. The benchmark it on them, this question is which you also did, but if you try to scale it for deeper networks, such as you know, ResNet, which is used for you know, ImageNet applications, then people have shown that backprop bits DFA. So what kind of applications are you looking, you know? All to? right, so I know you pre-mentioned ResNet, <laughs> but DFA doesn't work that well for ResNet, actually. So I was wondering uh, what kind of applications you are you know, hoping that this I, is going to help. Yes, so yeah. thank you for your question. Yeah. And um, first of all, the main, one of the main purpose of this paper was to find out whether DFA can work for this purpose. So I, and, and I think it, it, can, it shows the possibility of working well. Mm -hmm. And you, because you mentioned about ResNet, so let's talk about it a little more. So the purpose of ResNet is to stack as many layers as possible. Mm -hmm. And because if you use backpropagation, if you just stack many layers like 50 or 100, mm -hmm. then obviously there will be a, the, the gradient, the vanishing gradient or gradient explosion. So that's why people use ResNet. And if you think of um, in the DFA, because DFA, the error is directly when goes to the each layer independently. So it can actually train like many layers, fully, con the fully connected networks with what 
on many layers, such as 100 layers without ResNet architecture. Mm -hmm. So it was mentioned in the original GFA paper. So it can scale well with many, many um, fully connected layers. Okay. And about other DNN architectures, then um, about CNN, then DFA works, but the, the accuracy degradation is a little bit more compared to the fully connected layer. So the, the accuracy degradation is about 4% point to 5% point, I remember. And about RNN, up to now, there's um, no related research about it. So yes, I, yeah. For uh, it, it, your, what you asked though is also my future work. I really yeah. want to see whether it can scale. And I think it goes to the, the second question as well. Mm -hmm. So I really want you to try, uh, try the my algorithm to the bigger data sets like ImageNet mm -hmm. in the future work. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Daniele from Google. Um, sorry, maybe I missed this, but can you clarify what were the speed ups that you obtained with uh, Pocket and then? Um, uh, it, it's hard to say right now because when I when I was um, tr uh, when I was comparing the result, the Pocket and then also the floating point BPS, I used the different platforms. Uh, for the for the back propagation, I used the Google Colab and used the online with the, with the help of GPU. But for Pocket and then because this is a proof of concept code, so I used only CPUs without any like optimization. So uh -huh. at this moment, I cannot say about the speed ups or that that thing. Okay. Yeah, I'd be very interested in seeing any speed ups. Thanks. Thank you. And we are very thankful for, for our sponsors. Uh, the executive, the premier sponsor this year is, is Edge and Pulse. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, executive sponsors are ARM, Deep Light, uh, uh, Qualcomm, and Sintian. Uh, Platinum sponsor Analog Devices, uh, Brainchip, Infineon, ClickerTech, Latent AI. NXP, uh, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, and Synaptics. Really very diverse company, gr great companies uh, who are really driving uh, tiny ML forward. Uh, and um, uh, gold sponsors for the hub, Micro AI, Prophecy, Seed Studio, SenseML, uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, Synsense, XMOS. And we have a list of uh, civil sponsors, Avion Devices, Aspinity, Siva, Amza, uh, Greenwave Technologies, Gravity, Hymix, HOTG, Imagimob, um, Itemis, uh, Lattice, Nota, uh, OmniML, PixArt, Plumerai, Kixo, uh, Rackner, Rixen, SAP, Stream Analyze, Texel, and Google. So we are very uh, thankful for their support and more importantly for them being part of this community and driving it forward.